Hi everyone, how's it going? Welcome back with me Nathan. In this video, I want to show you the new state-of-the-art thinking models released by OpenAI, which are O3 and O4 mini models. So a few days ago, OpenAI released not one, but two new AI models called O3 and O4 mini, right after they just released a model named GPT-4.1. They also released a new AI coding environment that you can run from the terminal called Codex. More on that later. Now, the O3 and O4 mini models are OpenAI's smartest and most capable models to date, with full access to AI tools. These models are designed to think longer and reason more deeply before responding to requests. Plus, they can autonomously use and combine all ChatGPT tools such as web browsing, running Python code, analyzing file content, both text and visual, and even generate images. These new models think with remarkable nuance, employ tools strategically, and deliver highly contextual, intelligent outputs. Beyond raw benchmark scores, their true advancement lies in the depth and quality of their reasoning. First, let's examine O3, OpenAI's most advanced reasoning model to date. O3 excels in coding, mathematics, science, and visual analysis, setting new records on CodeForce, SWE Bench, and MMU. It far surpasses previous OpenAI's models. It also commits 20% fewer major errors, shining in programming, business tasks, and creative iteration. The trade-off, however, is cost. Input tokens run for $10 per million token, with cached inputs at $2.50 per million, and output tokens priced at $40 per million. Next is O4 Mini, a compact, cost-efficient powerhouse. It dominates many benchmarks, outperforming the O3 Mini, and is ideal for high-throughput applications in math, coding, and visual reasoning. Its pricing is significantly lower when compared to O3. At 1 and 10 cents per million input tokens, 275 cents per million cached inputs, and 4 dollars and 40 cents per million output tokens. Looking ahead, OpenAI will soon introduce O3 Pro which promises even greater leaps in performance and efficiency. As tool use becomes standard and agent-based AI advances rapidly, pricing and capabilities will continue to improve. Considering benchmark performance, O3 and O4 Mini deliver substantial gains across coding, mathematics, and reasoning. On SWE Bench Verified Tests, O3 scored 69.1%, and O4 scored 68.1%, both outpacing Gemini 2.5 Pro at 63.8%. They trail slightly behind Cloud 3.7 Sonnet in certain reasoning tasks, but still represent a major advance. In mathematics, O4 Mini leads the IMA 2024 and 2025 benchmarks with scores of 93.4% and 92.7% respectively, outperforming both O3 and Gemini models. For general reasoning, O3 tops MMU at 82.9% and HLE at 20.3%. Overall, O3 stands as a top tier reasoning and coding model, whereas O4 Mini offers exceptional performance relative to its size and cost. Both mark a clear leap over previous generations and current competitors of OpenAI. With a 200k token context window, both O3 and O4 Mini are impressively capable. However, for coding tasks, the O4 Mini makes more sense. It delivers nearly the same performance as O3 at a fraction of the cost, preserving your budget without sacrificing quality. Now, one more interesting data point that I found is in the Ader LLM leaderboards. Aether is an AI-powered agentic programmer that you can use in the terminal, and they have a coding benchmark test to see which LLMs work well with Aether. In this test, the AI models are tested on 225 challenging coding exercises across popular programming languages such as C++, Go, Java, JavaScript, Python, and Rust. Here, you can see that the O4 Mini success rate is almost the same as Gemini 2.5 Pro, but the API cost is more than three times higher to Gemini. Meanwhile, O3 High does perform better than Gemini, but the API cost is almost 20 times higher than Gemini. If we believe this either LLM test, then using O3 and O4 Mini will cause a big hole in your wallet, while delivering almost the same quality as Gemini 2.5 Pro. And by the way, OpenAI also released Codex CLI, an open-source, terminal-based coding assistant. 
Similar to Cloud Code or Aether, designed for Mac OS and Linux, it leverages the latest OpenAI models and can be pointed at any compatible API. It lets you chat with the model, edit files, run code, and iterate, all under version control. It even integrates Apple's Seatbelt framework out of the box to keep your workflow secure. What sets Codex CLI apart is its commitment to a chat-driven development. It tries to understand your project, execute commands, and write or refactor code on demand. Unlike proprietary tools, its open source license means the community can adapt it, for example, to work with Gemini or other APIs. Under the hood, it's written in TypeScript, and you can install it using Node Package Manager. The app is surprisingly lightweight, and offers both an interactive chat interface and an inline auto mode for hands-free operation. Once installed, you can configure custom rules or workflows to suit your projects. I haven't tested it myself yet, but given its feature set, file manipulation, version control awareness, and model flexibility, it's a promising addition to any developer's terminal toolkit. In an upcoming video, I will dive deeper into Codex to review its performance and share my first-hand impressions. So don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell if that's something you want to see. Alright, now we're going to test OpenAI's latest thinking models. To put the claims to the test, we'll send a number of prompts to the model. I'm going to reuse the spreadsheet I used to evaluate GPT-4.1, but I revised and added new prompts to it. Now, if you are a free ChatGPT user like me, you will only have access to the O4 mini model. Go to ChatGPT.com and turn on the reasoning mode at the bottom, and all ChatGPT responses will be delivered by the O4 mini model. To access O3, you need to subscribe to ChatGPT Plus plan. It might be available for free users later, but I'm certain it's going to have a lower limit. Now, if you are a developer, you can get free access to O4 Mini Hike, which is comparable to Gemini 2.5 Pro, by downloading Windsurf. Windsurf is an AI-powered code editor that you can download and use for free, with certain limits. There are rumors that OpenAI is in a negotiation to buy Windsurf, and they already have a partnership deal, as you can see here on Windsurf website, GPT 4.1 and O4 Mini are free until 28 April 2025. We're going to use Windsurf, so if you want to follow along, just go to windsurf.com and you will see a button to download the version for your operating system. In my case, it showed the Mac version. Download and install it, and then we'll move on to the next step. Once Windsurf is installed, open the app, and you will be shown the onboarding screen like this. Follow the onboarding steps and just follow the instructions. After a few settings, you will be asked to sign into an account. You can register for a free account if you haven't got one, and you will be taken to Windsurf main screen after that. So here we have what's called the Cascade window. Cascade in Windsurf is just like Copilot in VS Code. Cascade is the entire AI system that powers Windsurf agentic mode. Now that Windsurf is set, let's start testing the O4 Mini High. In the models option below Cascade chat box, you will see the models option here. Down here, you can see that O4 Mini Hike is listed as free for a limited time. There's also the O3 Hike model, which costs 10 times the credit. This means if you have 50 Windsurf credits, you can only use O3 Hike 5 times. It's really that expensive to run. And there's also the Gemini 2.5 Pro, which just costs 1 credit, so it's 10 times cheaper than O3 Hike. Anyway, let's start with the testing. Pick O4 Mini High as the model, then grab the prompt. The first task is to create an SVG of a solar system with the sun at the center and five orbiting planets. Each planet orbits the sun with different speeds. Each orbit should be a visible elliptical path. Label each planet with tags that follows its orbital path. The labels for five planets are Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, and Jupiter. Grab this prompt, and then go to Windsurf paste the prom, and fire away. Now O4 Mini Hike will take some time to complete, so I will pause the video and skip ahead to the result. Alright, so here's the result given by O4 Mini Hike. Here, we can see that the planets orbit the sun as requested, each with different speed. The planet names are pinned to the orbital paths, so let's now revise this a bit, so that the planet labels will follow the planets as they circle the sun instead. 
Go back to Windsurf, then type the planet labels should follow the planet in the orbit. Okay, now I'll skip ahead to the result again. Alright, here we can see that the planet labels are following the planets. Very cool. Okay, so O4 mini hike managed to pass the first task. Let's continue with the second task. The next task is to create a simple but functional Kanban board, just like Trello, using Vue.js. If you don't know what Vue.js is, it's a library to build the front end of a web application similar to React.js. Users should be able to add columns, create tasks, drag tasks between columns, and rename or delete everything. Keep the entire app in a single JavaScript file as one component. Persist the data using local storage. Again, copy this from, go to Windsurf. This time, let's turn on the write mode so that AI can create and edit files on its own. Pass the prompt to the chat box and fire away. I will pause the video again and skip ahead to the result. Okay, so after a while, this is what O4 Mini Hike has created. The UI is a bit off, but let's test the functionalities of the app. First, create a new column. Type the column name here, then click Add Column. OK. Add another column. Then another. It's working. So next, let's create a task. Let's name it Explore O4 Mini High. Then click Add Task. Alright, now add another task. Next, edit the task. It's working. Edit the first task as well. Now drag the tasks to move them to other columns. Next, edit column name. All working, so uh, delete a column. And then delete the task. Alright, all the functionalities are working. Honestly, this surprises me as I expected one or two functions to fail, but O4 Mini actually nailed all the requirements in the prompt, so of course this one will be a pass. Nice job, O4 Mini! Alright, the next task is to build a procedural city generator using the HTML5 Canvas API. It should draw a top-down view of a city with randomly generated elements such as streets, buildings, parks, and intersections. Include simple animations like cars moving along roads or lights turning on in buildings. The layout should regenerate with each refresh, but follow a consistent logic. Output size should be 1000 times 600 pixels. Show the output in one HTML file. Again, copy this from and then paste it to Windsurf. We'll keep it in agent mode so that it can create the HTML file required to complete the task. Okay, here is the result. I say this is pretty good. Here is the park, and here is the building with like animations, and then the cars. Building height varies, so I think this fulfilled the requirements. Now, let's refresh the page to see if the objects are regenerated. Yup, all the objects are randomly generated. Very nice. Alright, so O4 also passed this task. The next task is a logical question to test the thinking power of the model. The question is, a farmer owns a fox, a chicken, and a bag of grain. He needs to cross a river using a small boat that can only carry himself and one other item at a time. If left alone, the fox will eat the chicken, and the chicken will eat the grain. What is the minimum number of crossings the farmer must make to get all three items safely across the river without any being eaten, and in what order should he move them? The answer format is number of crossings and then step by step move list. So let's copy the prompt, go back to Windsurf. This time we will use the chat mode as this is just a question. Pass the prompt and then fire away. Okay, so O4 Mini got the answer correct. The number of crossings is 7. First, the farmer will take the chicken because it's okay to leave the fox with the grain. Then, the farmer go back to take the fox across, then take the chicken back, get the grain across, then go back to get the chicken. Okay, so O4 Mini also passed this test. Now for the final test. Create a minimalist CSS-only painting of a sunset over mountains reflected in a lake. Use no images or SVGs, only HTML and CSS, including gradients, pseudo-elements, positioning, 
and shapes like circles and triangles. The painting should have a sun, mountain peaks, and the reflection in the lay. Use responsive units so the layout scales well on different screen sizes. Once again, grab the prompt, then paste it to windsurf. Enable write mode before hitting submit, and fire away. Alright, so this is the result given by O4 Mini High. The CSS painting is nice. It has the sun, the lake, the mountain peaks, and the reflections in the lake. Now let's test the responsiveness. So, the painting is actually responsive as well. Good job once again for O4 Mini. By the way, I tried this same prom on Gemini 2.5 Pro earlier, and the result is kinda okay. Gemini added a big white border around the painting, so the painting became very small. It's responsive as well, but I personally like O4 Mini painting better. Okay, so O4 Mini passed the final task as well. So, this model actually exceeded my expectations, especially with the Kanban board task, which has many small functions to implement. I think O4 Mini is actually very capable. From the price tag alone, it's slightly cheaper than Gemini 2.5 Pro with comparable, and sometimes better, result. Of course, this still doesn't count the 1 million context window that Gemini model has. So I'm pretty sure that Gemini 2.5 will beat O4 Mini in reasoning across massive amounts of information. And that brings us to the end of the video. So, what do you think about the O4 Mini hype test? Personally, I think the model is pretty good as it can pass all the tests I throw at it. I hope you all enjoyed today's video and get some value out of it. Let me know your thoughts or questions in the comments. I will join the conversation and reply as often as I can. If you're new to the channel, Code with Nathan is a channel dedicated to simplify complex tech topics so that you can master them easily. So make sure you subscribe if that's something you find interesting or useful. Make sure you like this video, turn on the notification bell, all the good stuff as it helps this channel to grow. With that being said, thanks again for watching until the end. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you in other videos. Bye bye.